Um, just to start up front, obviously, to pass on all, as well everybody else the uh, hopes and prayers and thoughts uh, to all the people involved in Las Vegas. Um, uh, the things that went on out there, obviously, a, a great indication of what's going on in our society. And, and just continue to prayer and safety for everybody uh, involved there and, and in the future. So um, uh, last week, uh, uh, I know a couple guys asked uh, after the last one. So offensively, uh, we gave MVP status uh, to Jordan Jones and Deion Stewart to get those two involved in the game was was awesome. Um, both of them took huge steps in their preparation as well as uh, their performance during the game. Uh, the defense scout MVP was Brandon Young, who actually got uh, a couple plays in on special teams as well. A guy that's really been uh, a nice development here in fall camp. Defensively, the scout uh, defensively, the MVP went to Dwayne Eugene, just playing at a really high level. Um, hit a couple nice moves on pass rush to get a, a safety, or I'm sorry, got a sack as well as a couple TFLs. Just uh, engaged. Uh, uh, just a really, really uh, good. Good overall performance by him. Uh, our offensive scout MVP was uh, uh, Dalton Hyatt, uh, freshman quarterback. Was really impressive all week uh, during fall during the uh, uh, camp as well as just last week running the scout team offense. And then special teams Ryder Lucas uh, had a number of plays on all four phases of the kicking game that gave him that. And our scout team special teams player was Byron Keaton. Um, uh, really came out of the game pretty healthy. Uh, didn't have any uh, uh, any issues pop up uh, during the course of the game that. Um, We'll limit anybody going into this week. We did have a little bit of a flu bug go around towards the end of the week. A couple guys were sick and nauseous, uh, but uh, really other than that, uh, those guys all recovered. And uh, I think uh, Hayden Henry had a pretty good bout with uh, some food poisoning. I don't know where he got it, how he got it, but uh, he was he was pretty sick. Thursday, Friday, came back and played well on Saturday. So uh, should everybody back out there? Um, I like the progress that some guys made, but on the, on the same account, we still have a lot of things we've got to clean up, offense, defense, and, and uh, a uh, certain phase of the kicking game. Um, uh, I did like that certain new players arose uh, uh, really in all facets, uh, as well as some of the older players continue to move forward. So uh, we'll jump into this week, a South Carolina team that uh, obviously has had some success. I know they uh, lost a tough one to A&M on Saturday, but uh, a very, very good quarterback. Uh, Will's, Will's always going to have a great defense. Uh, they're very opportunistic players. Um, had a big win earlier in the year against NC State, and obviously they've been on to do some good things. So we've got a work cut out for us. Again, the SEC road game, but I think our guys are very, very excited. Probably get on the road and, and play in the SEC and see exactly what we got. So uh, with that, I'll leave it from there. You, you talked to Sunday, and I did, yeah. I talked to Michael and, uh, and his mom. Um, uh, he made a lot of progress, and the things that we asked him to do, we're still going to take this week to evaluate and see where he's at. As of right now, he wouldn't play on Saturday, but. Um, uh, to see how he handles the week. Thursday, we have a big academic meeting in the morning. Uh, hopefully, he continues to make a step forward there as well as everything else that we've asked him to do, and, and we'll kind of play it by ear. So uh, no, he won't practice with us this week at all yet. Could you have envisioned that David Williams would have been as well as he has, or as productive as he has? You know, uh, just a little bit, Tom, because I had a little bit of a history with him. You know, I knew him, uh, uh, obviously, as a recruited high school player. I knew that he stood for a lot of the great things. His high school coaches raved about his. Uh, skill set and and just so you guys know, um, um, had a conversation with David last night. As you know, that I I really try to um, put our players in the best position to handle the week. I don't. I knew that there was going to be a lot of conversation uh, when I started recruiting David. Obviously, a SEC transfer, but then also a team that you're playing. Um, normally, we don't play. So um, uh, I asked David last night. Listen, we can do everything. You can do every interview that comes across your desk. We can limit it just to. Uh, one day this week, or we can we can do none, and, and we kind of opted together that we're going to not have him available to the media until Saturday. Not out of negativity or anything, just that uh, no needed uh, uh, dialogue more than it already is. Um, I, I will say this, when I called Will and when I talked to anybody at South Carolina, they raved about him and who he was and what he was. There was never any angst or ill will, and the same was from David. David never had anything uh, but positive uh, dialogue. He wanted to get to an opportunity to maybe play in a pro-style offense and, and, and change it up for his senior year. And obviously, we were able to fall into that mode. And he's been he's been a blessing in disguise, uh, just a tremendous uh, person. Um, you know, when I brought him on his visit, you know, I even told him, I said, hey, if it's not a good fit for you or me, we'll go in a different direction. But let's just come and see what we got. And uh, he was awesome once he got here. And he's been, a, been uh, an unbelievable addition since then. <laughs> yeah, um, I think we recruited, not I think, I know we recruited him a little bit out of high school. Um, we didn't have a scholarship opportunity for him, um, uh, but but when the uh, um, uh, chance for him to come to campus here, I believe he contacted us after that first semester of his freshman year. 
uh, either through Barry or through his high school coach, I can't remember, and then really kind of made a no, um, uh, um, uh, uh, name for himself last spring. Um, and and, and uh, I know Coach Rose felt really strong about him. Special teams guys started talking about him, and then just a popular player with their players um, overall. And uh, I was looking for guys to maybe step on and certain step up in in a, in a kicking game, and and um, he did a really nice job. Him and uh, Derek Munson both did a really nice job. He did. He's a very explosive, very powerful kid, uh, very conscientious. Um, uh, plays a lot of physicality down there. Him and Munson both, I think, made that notoriety early on, and uh, that's why we thought we'd give him a shot, and obviously worked out well. Uh, speaking of Munson, the decision to play him, does that mean that he might get some work at linebacker? Absolutely. I think Buster, there was some talk maybe that Buster might be in. Yeah, um, rep Buster a little bit last week, just not quite there yet uh, for us to feel good about. Um, I, I, to, be, to be quite honest, I wanted to get two more players, and Brendan Young, it doesn't affect his eligibility uh, at all. And, and Munson, we thought, would probably be able to give us a little bit more versatility uh, uh, with all four phases of the kicking game, in addition a little bit from the line of scrimmage on defense. So uh, he's an explosive player. He's a guy that ever since I've seen him on film, he's always been able to find a ball. Uh, he's a guy that I think, obviously, now on special teams, but he's kind of a fearless kid. He really he likes the physicality of it. You saw him on that, that fumble on kickoff coverage uh, really came from him blowing a guy up, hit him into the guy, that spin the guy around, and then the ball was loose and, and came out from there. But um, again, another great kid out of Rummel. Um, I offered him when he was a sophomore in high school. Uh, I actually went off his high school coach's recommendation. I'd seen him practice a little bit, but uh, his high school coach spoke very highly of him. I went into like three high schools that day around New Orleans, and every high school coach said, hey, if you get a chance, that Munson kid, you know, because they knew we were good in Rummel. Uh, so I, I pulled the trigger on him after we looked at his transcript, and, and it all's worked out well. I get it. Um, you know, for me, just personally, you know, I was sitting on my couch Saturday night, and I had had some family in town, and uh, they cleared out, so I was sitting there uh, with Jen and, and Bella, and just you, 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 because you're so fresh in your head, you kind of knew. Like I saw sets, and I'm like, oh, they got this. Uh, how is South Carolina going to play this defensively? On the flip side, uh, when when um, South Carolina was lining up, I knew what A and M does a little bit defensively, and it was fun to see those strategies. There's some carryover, obviously, um, but. Because it is a new opponent um, that we don't normally play, I think you dr you try to draw a lot from common opponents. You know, uh, they started off with Dave Dorn, you know, NC State. Dave Dorn and I worked together forever, um, so uh, I'd watched that game earlier in the year just as a as a fan, you know, and and um, had saw that game unfold. So uh, it, it's it's a little bit of that. I understand the question, but I think it's more off of what we see on film now. Um, the, the coaches copy. Possibly, yeah. Um, I think you're crossing that bridge. We're after game four now. So by NCAA rules, if you play in four games um, and become injured after that, you know, um, uh, basically it's 33% of the, of, of the games you play, um, you could be redshirted. And, and at, from game four to six kind of comes that cutoff point where you just got to say it's a point of no return. <laughs> uh, you know, so in my tradition growing up um, in, in, in uh, post-game celebration, that was one of the Coach Fry's big deals. I don't know. I, I never heard of it here before, so I'm assuming that's something that he came up on his own. I almost did it my first year. It's for big games. And, and um, you know, one of the things that I was stressing last week to our guys is we need to have fun. You know, guys, there's so much negativity uh, that brought, gets brought into your world. We, when these moments come, you gotta, we got to have a little bit of fun. So. Uh, I had thought about it a little bit uh, during the course of the summer and um, uh, just hadn't had a moment where I, I thought it. And then after the game, you know, guys were happy and excited, so I threw it out there and uh, we had a little bit of fun with it and hopefully it uh, continues to grow. Is that something you'll make a tradition of? Well, we'll see. I, I wanted to see their reactions and a lot of them had fun. I don't know if they're having fun with me or the, or the act itself, but uh, it, was, it definitely got a reaction, which is what I was hoping for. He's a tremendous player. Um, uh, obviously, it, it, and never um, had, had obviously had a chance to watch much of him until this this, this film came about. But uh, I tell you what, their quarterback's a really really good player. Um, obviously, he made some plays happen on special teams. He was really effective, obviously too. But uh, I think their tight end, 81, is a really a really dynamic. Um, they use him in a variety of different ways. A very 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 good football player. Um, 
I think as the case with with Will, you know, he's a defensive minded coach. Their defense is solid. They make a lot of really good plays. They play hard. They play aggressively. Sky Moore was a guy that visited uh, here. We 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 were on him hard um, uh, to try and get him to uh, come here. Thought we had a shot, and and so I've kind of always watched his career from afar just because I like the kid, and and then obviously to persevere through what he did last year. It's a it's a neat story to to see unfold because he's a really really talented player. Um, but otherwise, I think just out, out of respect to two ball clubs that are going to show up and play. Our, t- our offensive line, yeah. Um, well, a couple steadies. Frank's playing incredibly well. Uh, uh, Yelda's playing f- fairly well. Um, I mean, he, he's he's going to have uh, you know uh, one or two plays that we just got to continue to make him get better. Um, but I mean, he's playing really, really good football. Colt Jackson probably played one of his better games uh, overall. Um, really practiced well last week and did a good job. Um, we we did a little bit of substitution during the course of the week at practice with. Uh, Johnny Gibson relieving Ty. Just don't know if Ty is able to play, you know, 60 snaps of SEC football yet. Um, but Johnny Gibson again has been very versatile um, at right guard, right tackle. Um, uh, Paul Ramirez came in, and, and other than that one holding call, it and, and, and uh, really played pretty clean football uh, overall. So excited about the growth there. And then Brian Wallace is knocking on the door. I think he's in a position that this week we could possibly uh, see him in the mix. He's he's really. Uh, been great uh, uh, in the uh, practice, uh, just his attitude and demeanor and, and, and very, very positive uh, 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 and hopefully can get him on the field this weekend. Yeah. You know, just uh, the, probably one of the more enjoyable kids to watch grow. Um, he was a high school safety. I put him in. I grabbed him out of camp. Like the way he moved, I thought he could be a linebacker. Probably because of our depth that fir- that first year, you know, we just couldn't couldn't afford to, to redshirt him. So um, we we played him as a true freshman, but he was heavily involved in the special teams his first two years. A very conscientious young man. One of the first things that uh, I remember him getting up and talking about his daddy taught him that uh, you can learn something from everyone, uh, and 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 to make sure that you take advantage of that because every person that gets up and talks. Every like I have guest captains come in. So Friday, Russell got up to talk. He was sitting there right in the front row, writing everything down that Russell said. Uh, anytime I'm talking, I saw him. I see him over there writing everything down. Uh, every coach gets up and speaks. He he takes notes. Um, his his attention to detail is is is, is meticulous. Um, uh, now the thing about physically, you look at him. He's a 240-pound SEC athlete. You know, he started came in probably under 210 pounds, 205 probably, and. He's developed himself into a really, really good player and, and playing exceptionally high level, and his, his leadership skills have been off the charts. Is that a typical for guys taking notes on you know, an hour I, uh, I would say it's, a, it's, it's not in the norm. Um, there's a lot of our guys that take notes, though, especially when it's a non-football person. Um, you'll see probably, I would say, half the room take out a notepad, and, and we all give them notepads you know, to, to write down during the course of the week. And uh, I think we've had some pretty powerful uh, speakers in here during those time frames. And, and, um, uh, Russell was no different, and I, I think those kids want to write down what they say. I, I, I brought him up. Uh, I brought Russell's uh, comments up Friday night in the team meeting, Saturday before the game. Um, it's one of those things that when those guys sit in the chairs that that uh, that they sit in now, you know, and here's a former player that now and then Russell's done very well in his personal life to be worth a lot of money. Those guys take note of those success stories both on and off the field. You know, Nate, it, it, unfortunately, Dion had been kind of nicked since fall camp. He, he had twisted his ankle. Um, uh, we had, you know, I go back to the bowl game a year ago. We had a plan that was probably going to try to get him about six to eight touches during the course of the bowl game. And his first touch he scored on, but he also tweaked his ankle. And, and unfortunately, that, that shut that window off for the rest of that day. And then this year, same thing. We've been wanting to get him involved, but he had tweaked. Uh, uh, he actually had surgery on the ankle during the out of season. Um, and then came into fall camp and, and tweaked a, 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 it was more of a foot than an ankle and just finally got healthy. And I tell you what, Saturday, that bubble screen where he put that right foot in the ground and accelerated and dashed uh, vertically through those two defenders is, I think, a very good indication of what he can do. He's, a, he's very, very talented, probably one of the quicker kids that we have on our football team. Mm-hmm. Well, again, it's probably the one position I would say linebackers and O linemen that if I had my uh, first uh, first one or two recruiting classes to do over again, I would have grabbed more of them. Uh, just we were depleted at both positions. Um, 
uh, and then really those following years because we played some guys earlier than 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 they should have. It's depleted us now a little bit, but uh, I would say you know Scuda played his best game, uh, very active, very physical. He could run. Par Coach is probably talking. They tried some pipe routes, some things that that he got vertical on. Uh, Scuda did that showed his athleticism. Um, Dre, even though he didn't have his most productive game, you know he's very physical, and I think he shows up on film and. And, and now he's got to make some some uh, better decisions. He's making some things at the line of scrimmage that he's got to get uh, people aligned. As a linebacker, your responsibility is you've, you're kind of a field general. You got to make make sure people are aligned right and doing doing right. Uh, but I would say a guy that showed up kind of two different times. Grant Morgan with a tip pass um, uh, in the red zone there. I don't know if, if if too many guys would make that play. He recognized it. He saw the quarterback's eyes and he looked and read and ran and got a hand on the ball and tipped it in a direction that, that went into K. Rich's hand. That's, that doesn't happen by chance. That kid's got some gamesmanship to him. And then at the end of the game, uh, he made, I believe, the last tackle, if I'm not mistaken, on an open field tackle on a very, very a player that's made a lot of pe people miss. So I, I'm excited about 31 and what he can bring. Um, you mean like uh, games against each other? Yeah. You know, I, I I really I can't comment on all I see the scores. I don't know what happens during the course of the game. I know obviously, uh, um, you know, in this league, when things get if things get going one way, they can get going sideways in a hurry. Um, I don't know if that's been the case. Uh, you know, just looking at our games and and, and the way they've unfolded, um, uh, a lot of times the like, key injuries become huge, and people tend because coaches don't talk about it. But you know, if you're a team that maybe doesn't have that, um, you know, if you're not one of the top two personnel teams in the league, you have a, a critical injury at a certain position, things can get really, and it's a, it's a domino effect. You know, you pull a guy off a roster here, it might affect the other three phases of the kicking game, and, and that, that's really big. Um, in addition to that, home, home game things, I think some, some teams when you're at home, um, things can get uh, really, really good in a, in a hurry, but they can also get ugly, you know, if, if your home team isn't reacting in a certain way, so, or your fan base. So. Um, it's uh, it's just kind of college football the way it is right now. I think. No, um, I have not. I, I, I don't. Never been to South Carolina. Never played. The only time I played them here was when when they came here my first year. So. What have you heard about the playing there? Yeah, we'll we'll expect crowd noise. We'll play. Um, we'll play it up with our offensive guys. They'll be indoors all week. Uh, get the crowd noise going and, and get everything. Uh, um, that we do for SEC road games. Uh, the good news is with a, we've got a center and a quarterback who are in charge of communication, really, who played a lot of football. So offensively, you feel good about that. But we got to get the other linemen in check. We've got to get our wide receivers in check. Um, and then defensively, it can get loud, even though it's when they're on offense, it can get loud to make sure you get all the calls at the line of scrimmage and, and make adjustments, because that quarterback's very talented. Right, you guys address three every game this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now, um, you know, Cole, Cole does some things that we would ask him to do during the course of the game if they came up. Um, uh, Connor obviously kicked the ball very, very well on kickoff uh, on Saturday. Uh, Mazza is our, uh, probably if I uh, uh, had a second string kicker, it would be our guy. Although I think Cole, if he's kicking the ball well in, in pregame and has looked good all week, I would still use him uh, just because he's done it and he has had some uh, success. Uh, but Connor Limpert, uh, <laughs> I know, uh, 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 Pat shared with me that we're the only team in FBS that hasn't uh, kicked a field goal yet. Um, uh, but we've also been nine out of ten uh, the last ten trips in the red zone and have been it been touchdowns. The only one that didn't happen was the uh, uh, interception in overtime against A&M. So I'll take touchdowns over field goals any day. Do, do you have a 40 yard or a 41 yard and you had a chance in the fourth quarter? Is that maybe a good time to get a limper for the first kick? Well, see, Tom, that would be giving away a trade secret. Uh, you try to keep things in as a coach that you want to have be surprises on game days. But um, Connor Limper can hit from 41. I've seen him hit from 41. He's actually got a big leg. So in the first two or three games when, when Cole was our kicker, if we went something beyond, um, uh, if we went something beyond, uh, so I said out to the 25, which is a 43-yard field goal for Cole was his limit. If we went anywhere from 43 to 55, that was going to be Connor. Um, I've seen him make a 56-yard field goal. I believe he made a 54-yarder Saturday uh, in pregame. Um, so he's got a he's got a very uh, long leg and, and and powerful leg. Yeah, you know, Devwall really came along last week during practice. He like a couple other guys had trimmed some weight down. Felt really good on Saturday. Um, he he he's probably got a better understanding 
of all of them about what we expect out of that tailback position. You know, we want them to get we want them to get their four. You know what I mean? So if we run a push play to the left, we want to get your four. Your forty yarder comes off of that play. We, we when, try to plan our offense more along execution than trying to get lucky and see if people can't line up in the right way. Um, and and I, I think. That's the part that Devois knows. He can hit it up in there, hit it up in there, hit it up in there, and then all of a sudden he's free and he knows how to react off of it. I think Chase and a little bit of David both had a little bit of um, – they were trying to make something big out of something that, that didn't necessarily exist. And, and with our scheme offensively, uh, we want you to hit the hole. Uh, you know, Obviously, if it's closed off, you got to make some improvisation. But um, those three guys in general, they're into it. They're on it on the sideline, uh, uh, both of them, David and, and – uh, uh, Chase did some really, really good things with the ball in her hand as well as uh, a couple of protection things we got to clean up. But those three together, I think, are pretty formidable. Well, I, I, you know, we know they're going to have five guys out there, um, but I, I agree. Yeah, they, you know, unfortunately, they've had an injury bug. It's not going to really change what we do. You know, you just don't know who you're going against, and um, you know the. The part that we have uh, uh, a task at hand is, I think that quarterback is, a, is he, he he has the ability to get rid of the football, kind of like Saturday, you know. So Saturday they line the quarterback at six, and and he got rid of the football, even though we were coming with some some free rushers, you couldn't get to him in time. He's going to throw the football out, um, and uh, I think this quarterback is very similar to that. He's you know obviously a coach's son. He's been around it. He gets football. He knows two plus two equals four. He knows where to go with the football. If he sees something, he knows where to go with it. Um, a very intelligent player that uh, uh, I think he gets better when the game gets tighter. Um, uh, you know, and, and on the flip side of it, we got to we got to do a better job of executing our plan and make sure we can't give up any deep balls. Come on, earlier a lot about what you know, goes on in practice with mm -hmm. line receivers and stuff, but for him to actually connect a few pounds Jordan with new faces, down catch, yeah. I think third and fourth down. You know, there's I mean, third down is one thing, but fourth down is even bigger. You know, and, and you know we've had uh, we had some success, and and um, again, you don't make a fourth down call with the idea you're going to fail. You go you go you make a call with the idea you're going to have success. And uh, I thought he, in particular, that one fourth down play where he kind of had a guy up in his face and he threw it to uh, Dion out in the flat. Dion made a nice reach and grab um, to take a routine bubble play. I think uh, you know those bubbles and, and those quick hit plays for us. If you can. Take a couple of those and turn them into big hits. That shows uh, gives your quarterback a lot of confidence. So, um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think to do it in a live game situation um, gives gives eight. I think eight had his best game of the year. Um, uh, now there's some things we want to make sure we clean up and keep him up on his feet. Uh, but our guys protected him pretty well, and offensive line got better, which I, I think affected him overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I've been in a, I've been in a, in that hotel, but I, I, I and I know the exact area they're talking about. But no, I, I I think this morning when I heard it driving in, I was just overwhelmed. First, that I, I want to know, you know, obviously I got a few country country western uh, buddies, and, and my first thought was either any of them there. So I googled it up just to see who, you know, and I saw Jason Aldean. I saw Jason Aldean at the amp, you know, and and um, uh, it's just those situations. My wife will tell you the, 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 these things with the crowds and everything. I mean, it's it's it it. it it hits you, you know, and I know it hits our players. We we talk about it with our players, you know, that um, you know when the whole gun thing was coming up a year ago, we we discussed it with our players. You, you just when you're dealing with large crowds of environments, uh, unfortunately in today's world, there are things that you've seen happen that you never would have conceived of uh, at any point. But it's a reality of the world that we live in, and and I think every, everybody is better off discussing it than ignoring it. Yeah. Yeah, we actually did do South Carolina spring, and then of course in fall camp uh, heavy. Um, we knew that the quarterback was going to be a big part of it, um, and then I, when uh, uh, when the receiver got hurt, you, you, you knew that that was going to affect their offense. Their that's probably when I first started noticing there because we don't cross over with them a lot. That's I love tight end play, and when I saw 81 play uh, the way he does, I mean he's a guy that you admire and respect the way he plays the game and the way they use him. Um, um, he's a he's a very very important part of their football program. You can tell that. Um, and then defensively, I've just you know I've shared. Will and I uh, uh, have, have always been good since I've been in the league. I knew them beforehand, and, and uh, ad ad admire and respect what they do defensively because they're they're a little bit unique, you know. Any more questions? Thank you.